Alright, thanks for watching and today is a nice cautionary tale to show you that you shouldn't mess with divergent series because if you mess with them you find all sorts of crazy stuff and in fact let me illustrate this so I'll do three examples the first one I want to consider is the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 I guess plus 4 5 plus 6, etc, etc, and I actually want to show you that if you're not careful, you find that this sum equals to minus 1 over 12. And I'm sure you've seen those memes of, you know, sums of integers is minus 1 over 12, and I'm sure some of you were like laughing about this, but not understanding at all where it came from. Well, I'm here to remedy this. Let me show you how it, where this comes from. And it's just, again, from naive manipulation of series. Suppose you take this s and you multiply it by 4. Then, of course, you get 4 plus 8 plus 12 plus 16, etc., etc. But let's take those numbers and put them in nice places. So the 4, let's put it here. The 8, let's put it here the 12, let's put it here, etc, etc. So just put all those numbers in the even slots. And then let's subtract that. So if you do this minus this, on the one hand you get minus 3s. On the other hand you get, well, 1, 2 minus 4, which is minus 2, 3 minus 0, which is 3, and then minus 4, plus 5, minus 6, etc, etc. So, if you subtract those two, again, naively, assuming that commutativity and associativity hold, then you get this. And I want to show you that this equals to minus 1 fourth or something. So, now let's deal with power series. Now, consider the following. Consider the power series of 1 over 1 plus x, which is 1 over 1 minus minus x, which again just becomes a geometric series. 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed, etc, etc. Take that and again di naively differentiate both sides. If you differentiate that, you get minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. On the other hand, if you differentiate term by term, you get minus 1 plus 2x minus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, etc., etc. In particular, you know, multiply both sides by minus 1, and you get 1 over 1 over x squared is 1 minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 4x cubed, etc. What does that have to do at all with this series? Well, notice, just plug in x equals to 1. Again, naively, let's assume we're like bad boys and we don't care about radius of convergence. Then, on the one hand, this becomes 1 over 2 squared. On the other hand, this becomes 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5, etc, etc. So in other words, this whole series of alternating you know, integers just equals to 1 quarter. So going back to our original problem, minus 3s is 1 quarter. So if you divide by minus 3, you get s equals to minus 1 12. In other words, our original series, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, etc., etc., is minus 1 12. So your meme, you know, the meme profit in you is satisfied. Your inner meme is satisfied. But of course, mathematically, this is just ridiculous. Because, first of all, uh, you know, commutativity and associativity don't hold for infinite series. 
I mean, for divergence series. And also, you know, here we just naively plugged in this number, even though it doesn't always hold because of the radius of convergence. That was a, one cautionary tale, and I think it's the most exciting one. I shouldn't say that, because then no one's watching the rest of it. Okay, but <laughs> now let's just deal with another less exciting series, but still exciting. Well, what, if, what about this easier series? S is just 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, etc., etc. And the question is, is it still true for infinite series that we have A plus B plus C equals to A plus B plus C? In other words, is addition associative here? And I want to show you that no, because on the one hand, if it were true, then S would be 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, which is 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. On the other hand, well, S could be 1 plus minus 1 plus 1 plus minus 1 plus 1 plus dot dot dot, which would be 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 which is 1. So if this were true, then 0 would be 1. But you can have more ridiculous things, like s. Well, it's 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1. But s is also equal to 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1. So if you add those two up, again, assuming you can do this, then 2s would be 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So 2s would be 1. So s would actually be 1 half. So there are many values of f. There are at least 0, 1, and 1 half. And so, again, yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous, OK? So be careful of arithmetic when you do uh, when you deal with infinite series. Lastly, I want to show you that you can't even rearrange infinite series. And this is also a very cool example. So there was an associativity problem. Now let me talk about commutativity. So example three, suppose S is one minus one half plus one third minus one quarter, plus dot, dot, dot. And here's the cool thing about this. This series is actually convergent because by this alternating series test. However, what makes this difficult is it's not absolutely convergent. If you replace the minuses with pluses, then you get one plus one half plus one third plus one quarter, and this actually goes to infinity. And it turns out, not super important right now, but it turns out you can calculate this sum series and it equals to ln of 2. And what I want to show you in this example is that commutativity is not necessarily true, even for convergent series. So I want to show you that a plus b is not b plus a in the sense that I will rearrange the terms of this series and get a completely different answer. On the one hand, we can take the series S and divide it by two. Then we get one half minus one quarter plus one sixth minus one eighth plus dot 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 equals to ln of two over two. On the other hand, consider original series. So 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 quarter plus 1 fifth minus 1 sixth plus 1 seventh, etc., etc. I guess one more term, minus 1 eighth plus dot dot dot. That's equal to ln of 2. And now add both of them up and you get 1. Okay, this disappears, plus one third, 
minus one quarter minus one quarter is minus one half and then plus one fifth this one sixth disappears plus one seventh and then minus one quarter and then you know plus one ninth etc etc equals to three ln of two over two one half ln of two plus ln two, two is three halves ln of two. But now take this and compare them to the original series. One minus one half plus one third minus one quarter plus one fifth minus one sixth plus one seventh, etc., etc. That's ln of two. And in particular, if you compare this, notice that this series is just the same as the beginning, except with the terms jumbled around. Because look, one is here, one third is here, minus one half is here, one quarter is here, one fifth is here, one sixth is somewhere around there, one seventh, etc., etc. So legitimately, you've shown that, you know, you can rearrange the terms of this series and get a completely different limit. We started with ln of 2 and we got 3 halves ln of 2. And this is very legitimate. It's not evil magic or anything. But not, not only that, here's a cool fact. There was nothing special of 3 half ln of 2. With this series, that is conditionally convergent, so convergent, but not absolutely convergent. You can rearrange it any way you want to get any limit you want. Very crazy, but it is true. I don't quite remember how to prove it, but basically, suppose you're very close to your limit, just add lots of absolute value terms so you get even closer, and if it's not quite close, add minus absolute value terms because it absolutely you know, diverges, and in the end you get the correct limit. So, pretty crazy, but again, this is a cautionary tale. Uh, you know, if your series is you know, divergent or even you know, absolutely divergent, then be careful with them. You can't just do algebra like that. With convergent series, you're, you can be a bit more chill with that. All right, so I hope you like this cautionary calculus tale extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.